Welcome to the second episode of the three part series. Today we will discuss about metabolism and how it falters. Let's start. Remember Banerjee's laws of human physiology? The first law states that the human body is a machine and not treating it as such leads to catastrophe. Now picture your beloved mobile phone. It needs charging or energy to function. But constant overcharging harms its batteries. Just like machines, our bodies also require charging to operate, source from the food that we consume. And just like machine, overeating ensues. The entire process is known as metabolism. Body gets its energy from three macronutrients that we eat. Carb and stored fat act as the chief sources of energy, while protein helps muscle building and act as hormones. I will use sugar and carb interchangeably as carb is ultimately broken down into sugar in the body. Contrary to the popular belief, fat and not carb is the preferred source of energy. Then why is carb used by the body first? Because, rightly so, body considers sugar as poison and it tries to dispose it off quickly. A healthy adult with 5 liters of blood requires maximum of 1 teaspoon of sugar at any point of time. The moment body detects a spike in sugar, it secretes insulin. Insulin carries sugar molecules to the body cells to charge them with energy. Sugar level decreases, insulin level decreases too. However, thanks to our food habits, an urban adult generally inserts 31 teaspoons of sugar in the blood. Insulin spikes to the rooftop to dispose of the sugar from the blood to the cells. But body cells or batteries are fully charged by now and reject insulin sulfur. More insulin is secreted to do the same job, but of no avail. In other words, they become resistant to insulin. In medical term, it is called insulin resistance. Now what happens to the extra sugar? It starts getting accumulated in the liver and the organs in form of fat. As long as insulin is high, fat burning takes a backseat. While we keep storing fat, we don't burn the fat that's already stored, making us fatter and gain weight. Eventually, when the blood sugar drops, insulin still remains high and now needs work. It tricks the brain in making us feel hungry and crave for food. We eat again, raising sugar level. The cycle continues. This is called insulin trap. We become perennial sugar burner leading to metabolic unhealthiness and increased susceptibility to diseases. I have added a link to the first video of the CDs in this description for more information on sugar and fat burning. Human body loves ketone, its preferred choice of energy, which is generated from the fat burning. It's a much cleaner fuel, it needs much lesser oxygen and hence less stressful and creates much lesser wastes than sugar. But can body run on ketone alone, never needing fat? No. However, only 15% of the body, including parts of brain, kidney, red blood cell, and sperm cells rely on carbs. And the body can produce them internally through gluconeogenesis, using proteins and stored fats instead of relying upon external sources of carb. Lastly, let's touch gut metabolism. Trillions of bacteria called microbiota or probiotics reside in our gut and skin. This bacteria lives in their small homes called microbiomes and play a crucial role in digestion, immunity, vitamin production and maintaining a healthy weight. Unhealthy probiotics result in various issues such as vitamin deficiency, digestive problems, bloating, constipation, and weight gain. How to keep probiotics healthy? By providing them prebiotics, their food. The sources of prebiotics are fibers, 
chiefly from green vegetables and some fruits. I will discuss these topics in greater details in subsequent videos. Powered by what we have learned so far in the first two videos, we will now learn about the strategies to lose weight and gain vitality in the third video of the series. Don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon and stay tuned for the exciting conclusion. I will be back with more soon.